So we recently published a paper where 29% of the explanted specimens had a bacterial contaminant. Bacterial, not fungal. So fungus, in my experience, is less than five out of a thousand. So it's not something that um, plays a role. So once again, you know, all things being equal, the the bad actor here is Cutibacterium acnes and Staph epidermidis. Cutibacterium acnes is found in high concentrations on our chest, shoulders, neck, and facial skin. And Staph epidermidis is one of our common bacteria that is colonizing our skin all over our body. Those two bacteria readily produce biofilm. Uh, and when the the bacteria aggregate together and form a community and produce this, you know, biofilm, if you will, makes it harder for your body to get that eradicated. Just naturally circulating, we have natural killer cells that protect us against cancer. Uh, we have all of our, you know, army of immunity, if you will, that's constantly surveilling our body. But when we have a foreign body in it, like an implant, it can't resolve that. And when they act together and form this kind of biofilm that makes it harder to uh, eradicate, then you can have these signals that potentiate immune system activation, lead to fatigue and, and pain and all sorts of other chronic inflammatory symptoms. So as it relates to scar tissue, when we're trying to help each patient because about a third of them will have a bacterial contaminant, and very rarely there's a breast implant-associated anaplastic large cell lymphoma for, for these implants that are textured, 